we're going to be taking the first and second derivatives of a polynomial function. And to do so, um, we're going to be using the power rule listed over here on the right hand side. Basically, the power rule says the exponent, if we have our variable raised to an exponent, the exponent can come down in front, uh, become a multiple out here, and we reduce the exponent by one. So one at a time, we can deal with each one of the terms in this polynomial. On the first term, we simply have x to the fourth power. So we're going to bring the exponent down and reduce the exponent by one. So we have four minus one makes three in our exponent. The second term, we can bring the constant along, the coefficient of five, and really focus on taking the derivative of x to the third power. So in doing so, we're going to bring the three down in front and reduce the exponent by one. So three minus one makes two. Third term here, we'll bring the coefficient or that constant along, the four comes along. The derivative of x to the second power, we're gonna again use the power rule. So the two comes down, two minus one makes one for our new exponent. Moving on to the two x, we can bring the two along, the constant, but this time our exponent initially is a one. So as we reduce, uh, we bring the one down in front and reduce the exponent by one, we have one minus one, makes zero for our new exponent. And then finally, the derivative of a constant is always going to be zero. All right, we can clean this up a little bit and make our first derivative look a little bit nicer. We can say, well, the first term can come along, but then five times three is gonna make 15 x squared. Four times two is gonna make eight x to the first power. And then we have plus two times anything raised to the zero power is one, as, as long as it's not zero. All right, so two times one makes two. Um, that is the derivative of a linear term as well. That's always gonna be the slope of that, that linear term. Okay, um, next up, let's evaluate this first derivative at two. So to evaluate this, we already have the derivative. This is kind of the easy part. We wanna plug in two for each one of our x's into that first derivative. All right, and then do a little bit of simplifying down perhaps. We're gonna have four times two to the third power, that's four times eight is gonna make 32. And then two squared in that second term is four. So 15 times four is 60, plus eight times two is 16, plus two. And I believe this all reduces down to 110. Now, because that's positive, and it's the first derivative that we're dealing with because the first derivative is positive at a value of two. We know that the graph is increasing at two. All right, next up, let's take the second derivative for f of x. So to take the second derivative for f of x, I'm gonna go back to my first derivative and use that power rule again to take its derivative. So this time through, we're gonna say, well, we can bring the four along and then focus on the derivative of x cubed. You bring the three, down, reduce the exponent by one. Bring the 15 along, and then taking the derivative of x squared, you bring the two down, reduce the exponent by one, so you have x to the first power. Then we have a linear term, that plus eight times x is gonna be a plus eight. And then the derivative of our constant is always gonna be zero. So cleaning this up, we have four times two makes 12, x squared plus 30 x, plus eight. All right, so that's our second derivative. If we want to evaluate our second derivative at a given value, this time being two, again, this is not that difficult. You just want to replace each of the x's over on the right-hand side of your second derivative with the given value. So here we have uh, 12 times four is going to be 48 plus 30 times two is 60 plus eight, which I believe gives us 116. Because this is a positive second derivative at two, that tells us that the graph is concave up. If that had been a negative uh, value that came out when we plugged in our two into the second derivative, that would mean it was concave down at an X value of two on our graph. All right, hope this helps out. Good luck to you on taking first and second derivatives using the power rule.